Hey guys, welcome to Crafts Go Bloom. My name is Krista, and today I am going to tackle this disaster. I am going to get through my entire pile of works in progress and finish every single one of them and free up more room on my list for more whips. First though, in our cleaning process, a shower. So I'm going to get to that and I'll meet you back here. Much better. Let's talk for a minute about how this always happens. I have this couch. It's not like our main couch or anything, so a lot of times we just kind of toss random junk on it. There's books, my, my big camera is back there. It starts out clean and nice, but then I ask my six-year-old to hand me something from here. This happened. Some of what's up here is not actually a work in progress, but just a skein of yarn that we need to put away. So I'm going to set that in a separate pile and I'll get those in my yarn, yarn storage later. This is Bernat Baby Velvet in sea foam and i got this a few years ago so i'm not sure if this is still available we have another bernat baby velvet in wandering blue that i bought at the same time as the other one scrunchies there are a ton of scrunchies up here i've got a bad habit of making the scrunchies and tossing them over here we're gonna have a pile of these these are finished scrunchies um, but there are definitely some in here all of the ones in this color um, I think this is called Clay Rose. All of these pink ones are unfinished. I need to weave the end. So let's see if I can find any other scrunchies. A lot more than I realized. This is my yarn label from this color, which is chilled blue. And I did a how-to video on how to make these scrunchies. If you want to watch that, I will link it. And I made one of these, but I finished that skein of yarn and I keep these in a gallon size Ziploc bag. And at the end of the year, I like to count up how many I got through. My goal is to always try and beat my previous year's number of skeins. Don't believe this is attached to anything. This is from the Hobby Lobby clearance sale. This is Yarn B Forever Plush in blush and i love it this is just a ball of yarn but it is technically my to-do list i ran out of little chocolate bunnies and so i need to make some chocolate bunnies this is my attempt at getting through a skein um, to get it finished and so i made this velvet twist headband this is in the chilled blue bernat velvet and this is a Daisy Farm Crafts free pattern that I can link below. Random scrunchy. These all have their tails hanging off, so I'm going to collect these and we'll get to weaving those in. Now that reddish colored scrunchy matches this cowl that I made. Um, this was a free pattern I found on Pinterest. So I will have it linked below. I can't remember who it's by, but all I have to do is weave the ends in. So let's stop and do that for a minute. I brought all my supplies over here. Scissors, tapestry needle. I have this little bag and all my hooks. And this is the bag I got off Amazon. Um, it came with a whole bunch of hooks, a whole set. I have a whole set of ergonomic hooks and just metal hooks and it came with some extra um, rulers and tapestry needles and some different kinds of stitch markers. I can try to find a similar set and link it below. They have lasted about three years now and some of the ones that I've used a lot are really starting to show some wear but if you are new this one's kind of kind of losing its rubber coating and things like that but I have been using this a lot for three years. This whole set was less than $20 back when I bought it a few years ago and I do have some clover hooks in there now. I have my whole my whole stash of hooks in there now but if you are new or on a budget and or you're trying to teach a kid or something like that and you just need like a 
a basic starter pack. Those really aren't that bad. Um, I would save your money and wait on the clover hooks until you're sure that you really need them. And isn't this just how it goes? You save these projects because you're like, I don't really want to weave my ends in. And then when you sit down to do it, it's like, I should have just, it, this is taking me two minutes. I should have just done this. I made this cowl and when I, you start with a chain um, and then you, you crochet the chain onto itself. And when I had that first starting chain, it seemed very small. So I added, I think 20, 20 chains to my starting chain. And now I feel like it looks too big. Now that it's got some height to it, I feel like it could have just stayed, stayed at the original length that the pattern calls for. So like I said, I will link this below. It's a free pattern. And um, unless you need to, I would not adjust the starting chain on this one. Now the goal after all of this effort is to have a clean couch that stays a clean couch and not fill it up with projects again, but let's be real, probably not gonna happen. What's next? Let's find these scrunchies. Don't believe there are any more. I think it's just nine scrunchies that we need to weave in. So let's get comfy and let's get to weaving in all these ends. This isn't even all of them, I dropped a few. Three down, six to go, time for a lunch break. Lunch is done, let's get back to work. If you are crocheting along with this video, leave a comment below and let me know what are you, what are you working on? Are you new to crocheting? Have you been doing this for a long time? And now up next is eventually going to be a watermelon slice. I've made these before. I need to go around the outside with green. This is Bernat Blanket in smoky green. So I need to pretty much just single crochet around the outside. There's a little bit more to it. And then I need to sew on some watermelon seeds and add my eyes and a face. And then this project will be done. And I have my my polyfill as well. And this is a free pattern. This is a pattern for a keychain to be done in a weight for yarn. There's no face or anything on it. Um, it's just a plain mini watermelon keychain, but I love taking patterns that are written for keychain size, miniature size, and making them in burnout blanket yarns adding faces, turning them into amigurumis. If that's something that you'd love to watch me do an entire video of, let me know. Okay, I've got my outline done of the rind, watermelon rind. Um, now it's time to put on a face and sew on some seeds. I have my entire stash of different sizes, different um, colors of safety eyes. Because this is a plain watermelon, I am just going to do plain black eyes. If you've never done safety eyes before, they go wherever you, wherever you want to place them. They have these little spikes that stick off the back and then this is the plastic backing and you just pop that on the back this particular size and variety actually goes on really easily for me there they're not difficult at all so we've got our eyes in place now a long piece of this maybe two feet long it's going to be plenty and I'm going to use this same piece of yarn 
to make the mouth and sow the seeds on at the same time. And I keep folding this in half because we're going to stuff, we're going to fold it in half and stuff it at the end. Folding it in half to really figure out the placement of the mouth. I'm just holding the tail of this yarn so that it kind of stays in place. And I'm not going to knot anything at the beginning in case I don't like how it's turned out and I want to redo it. But I'm pretty happy with that. And I try to go around in a circle somewhat just so that my yarn tails end up in the same spot and we can just tie them off in a knot. So there we've got some seeds all over. This is what we're going to see when it's folded in half. We ended up with the sewing yarn and the tail very near each other. I'm going to tie these into a knot, just regular basic knot, being sure not to pull the yarn too tight from the front of the project or it distorts the sewing that you've done, but you want to make sure that you have a very tight knot on the back. So we're done with our eyes, we're done with our mouth, we're done with our sewing seeds. Now we need to close it up. All of this will go in here like a little watermelon taco and you'll never remember that it was there. I'm gonna start sewing it closed and then use polyfill um, when we get to about here or here we'll start stuffing it okay while well, we can still reach inside of it it's time to stop and add the polyfill i buy it in these huge bags this one was opened from the bottom but buy these big 32 ounce bags and as you can see i'm starting to run out of this bag but i have another one in the other room He's looking a little more uniform, and I think if we close this one up, we're going to have a pretty, pretty uniform shape across this one, and this one will be finished. Okay, I've gotten to the end, and all I need to do now is cut a long tail, weave in my end, and this project is done as well. I don't have any other projects on the couch that need this yarn, so that will go in the pile of yarn that just needs to get put back into my yarn totes. I have a very small setup that I'm going to be doing, um, market type setup, that I'm gonna be doing about a month from now but I am also prepping to add items to my Etsy shop. And those should be up by the end of this month. Got fuzz. Okay. We're done with the watermelon. But let's check out this project next. This is coming out of its wrapper, but this is Bernat Forever Fleece in matcha from the Hobby Lobby clearance sale. And I wasn't quite sure what to do with it because I made um, some amigurumi with it, but it turns out very stiff. And so I started making these small baskets with it. So this basket needs to have the ends weaved in and then this basket I want to finish. And they're going to be nesting baskets, but I'd like this basket to be the same height as the one that is smaller around. So let's get these weaved in and weave this end in as well while it's still very easy to reach. And then we'll finish off this basket and I can move this skein to the side.
Okay, I've got the small basket finished. That was quick and easy. I think this has turned out nicely and it's going to make a cute set. Now you may not be able to tell this by my huge work and project stash here, but I love following the minimal mom here on YouTube and I can link to her channel below. And she talks about this concept called body doubling where you are more productive when you are working alongside someone. And so I really appreciate making these videos because this is giving me the motivation I need to work on this project of cleaning my couch off that I might not have otherwise gotten done because I would just walk past it and say, oh, maybe tomorrow I will get to that. I'm curious where you keep your stash of unfinished projects and do you ever go through them and get them all finished or does it just keep growing and some leave and some stay every now and then i just like to do this and get to the end of my list or else i stop having fun creating new things because i'm really just thinking about all the old things i need to get over with so i'm not really following any pattern here i just I've made similar things before. I used an increasing circle on the bottom. When I was the size I wanted, I did a round in the back loops only, and now I'm just crocheting around, not joining any, any rows or anything. And I'm just going until I reach the height that I want. And I think this project is probably going to take me a little while, so I'm going to finish it off camera and then I'll meet you back here when it's complete. Okay, we've made so much cleaning progress that I can sit on the couch again, which is wonderful because I am not in my 20s and I'm tired of sitting on the floor. I've gotten my bigger basket up to the height of my smaller basket that's just sitting inside, so I think they're going to make a great set together. I just need to finish off, cut off my yarn and weave this end in. Also, I sat up here to finish working on this and I found another hidden scrunchie. They are multiplying in the night. I'm going to finish up this basket and I think <clears throat> my next project is going to be getting my other camera and my books off of here, tidy this up, and we'll come back and get to work on finishing some projects. I think we're going to finish these purses or the bunny that I need to make. I haven't decided yet. We're making great progress. I have the baskets totally finished and sitting here. Now tidied up a little bit, much more space. I have this large cat I need to sew the face on, stuff the head, and then attach the head. The brown yarn for the bunny that I want to make. I have a pink toddler purse that I need to trim the fringe on that's still sticking off pretty long. And then I have three more toddler purses that I need to assemble. And I'd kind of been putting this off because I just, I love this pattern, but I personally don't enjoy making the strap. And I was watching a video. Um, I also don't love having to put the fringe on, even though I think it looks really cute. I was watching a video and saw someone else that had made this pattern and they just left the fringe off and made a smaller strap for a different kind of bag and so i think that's what i'm going to do with the rest of these so that they're a little quicker and finish i'm going to work on making this bunny and finishing this cat off camera and then i will meet you back here to work on some of the purses okay i'm back with almost a final update i got all three of these small purses finished and this is a longer strap with the fringe and all of those are done and the brown ball of yarn has turned into this cute little chocolate bunny so the last thing that i need to do is 
this cat. Now I have the legs, the tail, the arms, the body all in one piece. And I have the head. I just need to finish the face and attach the head and stuff this and sew it on and we'll be done. So I have this pink for the nose and I think I'm going to use just a plain gray for the whiskers. Not a huge fan of making cat faces, honestly, just because I feel like I never get it perfect. And after making such a giant cat and taking so long and working so hard, I want a perfect face on it. I need to put eyes in it, but I'm going to have to stop and have my husband help put them in because these eyes are very difficult to get the backs on this particular size and brand. I think these are 20s. They're a lot bigger. And this pattern is from a pattern book you can buy on Amazon. I will link it down below. I think it's called Cute Critters. And of course the pattern is supposed to be in a four weight yarn and I made it in Bernat blanket tie dye-ish, which is a six. So it turns out quite a bit bigger than, um, than the pattern intends for it to. I like to sew on as much of my face as I possibly can before I actually place the eyes permanently so that I can make sure I actually like what I've ended up with. And then the couch is going to be cleaned off. Okay, I think we're done. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. It's a little easier to see in person. Those whiskers, they sort of blend in. But we start out with something like that. And now we've got a cat face happening. So I just need to take a break, have my husband put the backs in these, and then I'm going to stuff it and sew it, and I will be done with all of my projects that I'm in the middle of. I did it, guys. We completely cleaned off the couch. I used up the first bag of stuffing and had to get a second one out, and I finished the final thing, which was this huge cat. Super cute. Um, my husband helped me out with the eyes, got the nose, got the whiskers, got the head sewn on, and it is going to be, I'm hoping like an attention getter at my market so I can have this on the end of the table, um, or out on the corner table to catch people's eye and bring them in. But it still didn't take me very long. I still think I'll probably only charge $40 for this, um, because it, it only took me a couple of hours. It works up really quickly with with the giant yarn, the, the blanket yarn and a weight six. So that is the end of this video. We made it. Um, you guys can't tell because I'll be doing some editing magic, but it took me about six hours to get all of this done. I did stop for a lunch break and did spend a little time with my kids, but I am ready to be done with this for the day and sit on my couch and enjoy some more crocheting. So thank you for cleaning with me. I hope you were able to either get some cleaning done or some more whips off of your list. And now to decide what I'm going to crochet next. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.